First off, before we get this hate train rolling towards ASUS from the mid-teens, I need to address my lack of uploads recently. I've been burned out recently and having to work more hours at my job, but after seeing the Core 2 Quad video perform so well recently, I decided to start making videos for this channel again. Don't expect them to be at the same speed as previous videos, but they will have the same quality as past videos. Anyways, onto this ASUS netbook tablet thingy. Yep, this is one of those weird Windows 8 era tablet convertible things, and at least for some aspects of the device, it actually really doesn't look that half bad. With a 1.46 GHz Bay Trail Atom quad core, it actually sounds like a real powerhouse. But don't be fooled, these Atoms have a bad reputation for a reason. But here, it's not that deserved. With 2 gigs of LPDDR3 RAM, you begin to see why I named the title the way I did. To put it straight, this thing has too little RAM for Windows 8, Windows 10, or Windows 11, and is the sole reason why I installed Linux. Why not install Windows 7 or XP, you may ask? And there's a very, very annoying reason as to why that I will get to in a bit. It has 64 gigs of EMMC storage, which is basically an SD card soldered to the mainboard, and performs just as bad as that sounds. With a 10.1 inch 1366 by 768 display, it doesn't have the greatest pixel density ever, but it doesn't look too terrible. It also has a crappy webcam and not a whole lot else. This keyboard, however, houses a 2.5 inch drive bay, which is really strange, but also kind of neat at the same time. Now, let's go ahead and see what games, if any at all, this thing can play. So believe it or not, even being in Linux, with me not knowing how to use it that well, I was actually able to install and play some games. However, it will not be the standard suite of games we normally would have. The games that I chose here were basically any game that I could get to run reasonably well. Minecraft, without Optifine, ran like absolute garbage. So, I installed Optifine and ran out of RAM on Windows 10, which is when I decided to take some brave medicine and hop on the Linux bandwagon. After installing Minecraft with Optifine, I managed to just barely squeeze by with enough memory to play and managed a playable but not great 20 fps on average with lows dipping heavily down to 7 fps crash drive 2 a game i used to play on super potato pcs including my xp machine from way back in the day ran at 28 fps which if i remember right is actually worse than my Pentium 4 system albeit at a much lower power draw. The Henry Stigman Collection ran at less than 60 FPS, far less, in fact, with it running at 11 FPS, which is very surprising coming from a 2D game. Brick Rigs rendering failed, so I couldn't play that. Spin Tires Mud Runner somehow managed to launch and ran really bad at 4 FPS even on the lowest settings. The long drive got to the menu when it was trying to start a new game. It crashed even on the lowest settings. Terratech gets to the load screen and runs out of RAM there. So gaming on the hardware itself is pretty piss poor. I would honestly say that if your internet connection is good enough, it would be a far better idea to use Steam Remote Play or GeForce Now to stream games to this thing, as it has no real gaming performance. Now while the purpose of Intel's Atom lineup of CPUs was to provide low cost access to the internet, they did end up getting considerably faster before Intel killed them off in 2016. So what should you reasonably expect from a low-end tablet from eight years ago? Well, 
more than I was expecting, I can handle 1080p YouTube videos, just barely, but 720p is really what I'd recommend. Heavier web pages like news articles, social media sites, even some of Google's web apps can struggle to load quickly. It'll load, you'll just have to wait a couple seconds for all objects to load on the page. The slow storage probably isn't helping us given how hard I'd have to imagine Linux is smashing that page file on this poor flash module. And if you're wondering why I'm using Edge on Linux, it's for one simple fact. From the multitude of browsers I've tested, Edge actually used the least amount of RAM. Every single megabyte makes a difference with having this minuscule amount of RAM. Now though, I think I should move on to some very big grumbles I have with this stupid thing. Yeah, so why do I hate this thing? And it's really not just because of the RAM. There are a multitude of issues with this thing in my eyes. And I've even created a list for them. So here we go. Number one, the only way to get fast storage in this thing is to have it in the keyboard. Meaning that if you want a nice user experience, you basically have to give up the entire point of the device, turning it into a netbook. Number two, the screen doesn't tilt back nearly far enough, honestly. Number three, the base is unusually heavy and is rather back heavy for obvious reasons. So holding it with the keyboard still attached is awkward and not very easy. Number four, the only USB type A port on this idiot is in the keyboard base, further reducing the usefulness of tablet mode. Number five, the micro USB charging port, not uncommon for the time, is right next to the micro HDMI port, meaning that you can confuse one port for the other, resulting in a fair bit of annoyance when trying to plug in the tablet, say at night or something. Number six, the device's firmware only supports 32-bit operating systems, and number seven, it only supports UEFI. It doesn't support any form of legacy BIOS booting whatsoever. The only way to get 64-bit support is by copying a few files in a Linux boot directory to make the device think it's 32-bit. And last but not least, number eight. While this one isn't as big of a deal, considering it is a proper tablet with an SoC, it doesn't have upgradable RAM which severely limits its usefulness in 2022. Now, if we take a look at the pricing, that can begin to forgive and show why and where they had to make these compromises. It was a touch under $400. That is absurd. You could have gotten a freaking iPad mini for crying out loud. While that had less storage and was not x86, it's a trade-off I would have taken. Even going to the Dell team to take a look at what they had for the same price, you could quite literally have gotten an Inspiron 11 3000, a laptop which can be converted into a tablet, which had a Pentium CPU, no atom weirdness here, with double the RAM, eight times the storage for a very similar price. Oh, and did I mention it was bigger as well? Okay, so with that rant out of the way, I think it's time to conclude on this very strange, very stupid thing. So, what do I think of this thing? Well, as I said, the Inspiron 11 3000 absolutely outclasses it to pieces. And the iPad Mini was a better option if you were dead set on a tablet. The design issues make this thing not really that interesting to me after getting my hands on it and testing it. Basically, if it were me, I would have a Linux installation on an SSD in the keyboard and an installation on the 64 gigs of onboard storage so that when you are in netbook mode, you can get pretty decent performance and when you're in tablet mode, you can actually still use the thing. Anyways, that's the video. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and you can show your support by clicking on the like button, subscribing, and hitting that bell so you'll know when my next upload is. 
I also have a Patreon where videos come out 24 hours early, as well as bloopers and cut videos. Anyways, DDT, out.